Welcome everyone to the Chicago Football Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Letizia. You can follow me on Twitter at CFC Bears. So we did the offense for week one. Um, if you haven't watched that video, make sure to check that out at an offensive breakdown. I was hoping to do them in one video, but the offensive one went a little bit longer than I wanted to, so I decided to break it up into two videos. This is going to be the defensive breakdown of week one for the Chicago Bears, uh, but make sure to check out the offensive one as well. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it. I did my spiel on the first one. So I'm going to break up the all 22. So this is um, a very different defense than what the Bears have run in the past. Obviously, switching from a, not only switching from a 3-4 to a 4-3, but switching from a two-gap defense to a one-gap defense. So this first play I have is a very good uh, representation of a one-gap defense, what the defensive line responsibility is, what the linebacker responsibility is. Um, and the Bears do a really good job of stopping this play. So... Right up. So you have A gap, B gap, C gap. You got that on both sides. A, B, C. So each in a one gap scheme, pretty simple. Each defender is responsible for one gap. So what you'll see from time to time um, in a one gap scheme, and, just, and you saw it a lot on Sunday, is the Bears will crash down the, their defensive linemen. Um, into, into the gap that they're responsible for. So what's going to happen here is you have Robert Quinn is responsible for the C gap. This B gap is the responsibility of the strong side linebacker. So you have the strong side linebacker here. You have the mic and you have the will. So Moore is the mic. Smith is the will. And the strong side linebacker. <clears throat> so Adams is responsible for this B gap. You have Mike Pen uh, Pennell. The nose tackle lined up as a one technique. He's responsible for that A gap. You have Armand Watts, who's lined up as a three technique. He's going to crash down into the, this A gap. Oops. Don't know where those went. And then you have al Muhammad, Muhammad, who's going to crash down into this B gap. So that leaves this C gap open. That is the responsibility of the weak side linebacker, Roquan Smith here. He's going to rotate over and do a gap exchange. So you have al Muhammad Muhammad lined up in the C gap. He's crashing down into the B gap. Roquan Smith needs to fill into that C gap that um, Al Qadim Muhammad vacates. So that's a, a gap exchange or a gap switch there. So that's just a little diagram that I had there. So we'll let that play run. You can see exactly what that looks like. Al Qadim Muhammad crashing down. Um, and the guy's just flowing to the ball, stopping the, the, uh, the ball for just a few yards gain. All right. So now later in the game, so that play was first. This play was a little later. This is an example of. Um, the linebacker's not executing that gap exchange. So let's diagram it again. You got the A gap, both sides. You got the B gap, C gap. Sorry for my handwriting. A, B, C. So they're going to be crashing down uh, this way. So Robert Crin here lined up in the C gap. He's going to crash down into the B gap. You have, I can't remember who this is, but he's in the lined up in the B gap. He's crashing down into the A gap. You have Mike Pennell in the A gap. And then you have uh, this defense and now could Muhammad light up the C gap. So um, uh, Nick Nicholas Morrow, he's responsible for the B gap. And that means Roquan Smith needs to get over here and be responsible for this C gap. Uh, but unfortunately, he doesn't get there in time. So we'll play that. You can see that's, that's another diagram of what happens there. You got the crashing down of the um, ends on the, on the left. And you just have Roquan Smith who doesn't is in the same gap as what uh, Roquan Smith and, and um, Robert Quinn are in the same gap, and that's not what we want. Roquan needs to get to the outside shoulder of that left tackle. He needs to be in the C gap when Robert Quinn is in the B gap. Unfortunately, they're both in the B gap. Both guys kind of take a step to the left. A little less egregious for Morrow because Morrow is supposed to be in this gap, so it's not that bad. Work on Smith, though, needs to be over here. So work on, you know, uh, struggling a little bit at times. This happens. From, this happened a good amount, actually, um, for Roquan in this game. Just not being in the right position. Brand new scheme. You know, obviously, he didn't make. He didn't play in the preseason. He didn't uh, practice much in training camp, just a little bit at the end. And it showed um, in this game. Um, he wasn't in the right spot. He's still learning. I expect him to be much better going forward. But that's just a, I chose that play to start with because it shows a good and a bad and also shows how this defense is supposed to be operating. 
All right, so this is another play, another run play for the Bears. It's another play that uh, I think is a good example of what a one-gap system is designed to do. Um, so I'm going to diagram this again, just because it's easier for me to see as well. Write out the ABC. A-gap, B-gap, C-gap. Uh, they're not going to be crashing down like they did. The defensive line is going to be crashing down like they did on the previous play. You have Dominic Robinson, who's responsible for the C-gap. You have Armand Watts, responsible for the B-gap. You have Mike Pennell, who is going to crash down a little bit into this A-gap. Then you have Nicholas Morrow, who's going to crash down into this A gap. Uh, the middle, the Mike linebacker. So again, weak side linebacker, Mike linebacker, strong side linebacker. So the Mike linebacker is going to close into the A gap. The strong side linebacker is going to be responsible for the B gap. And then the uh, end here, I believe that's Alkani Muhammad, is responsible for this C gap. So that leaves this weak side linebacker with the responsibility of just flowing to the ball. So the whole, whole part of this one gap system is to allow the weak side, weak side linebacker to remain unblocked and just make and just go and, and make tackles, be a tackling machine. That's exactly what that weak side linebacker is supposed to do. It's a perfect role for Roquan Smith. Um, he doesn't have to take he doesn't have to take on blockers as much. He's gonna be able just to flow and just let his instincts take over. Unfortunately, I think he's thinking a little bit too much um, in this new defense. Um, he kind of over, I'm not sure if he knew, I'm not sure if he thought he was supposed to be in a certain gap or something, but you'll see when we play it, he kind of is ready in a position to make a play and then jumps into another gap. So watch Roquan, um, the weak side linebacker on the left, on the left side of the screen. You see the guys crashing down into their gaps. Everyone's, uh, playing good sound, sound of football. And then you have, this is the, the lane for the right. You have Roquan Smith and he's looking right at it. He's in a great position to make a tackle right here. And then for some reason, and I'm not really sure why, he just jumps to the side. And, you know, luckily the other guys, you know, Nicholas Marr is able to come off his box and make that tackle. But I'm not really sure why, when he was in such a good position to make a play, why Roquan Smith jumped out of the way of that guy. Did he think Trey Lance still had the ball? I'm not really sure. Um... But either way, it seems to me like Roquan Smith is just thinking a little bit too much. Let your instincts take over. You know how to, you were a great linebacker. You know how to play football. It's a slightly different scheme, but um, I think you know. I, I think the world of Roquan Smith. I think he's a great linebacker. Um, he made a couple of nice plays later on in the game. I don't want to pick on Roquan Smith, but he did struggle um, in, in especially in run defense in this game, um, and that's just one example, another example where, uh, where of where he struggled. All right, one more example of this. And then we'll move on. Sorry to pick on Roquan a little bit here, but again, A gap, B gap, C gap, A gap, B gap, C gap. Okay. So you have, again, the defensive line crashing down. You have uh, Justin Jones here who's going to get into the A gap. You have uh, Robert Quinn who's going over to the B gap. That means that Roquan Smith, the weak side linebacker, uh, the middle linebacker here, um, no strong side linebacker in on the play. Uh, but you have the weak side linebacker who's then supposed to go over here and maintain that C gap. Um, you have uh, Angelo Blackson in the A gap here. Uh, Al-Kadi Muhammad is actually going to crash down to the B gap, and then the Mike linebacker is going to be in the C gap. So the two linebackers are responsible for the C gaps here. Um, you also have um, uh, Eddie Jackson close to the scrimmage. He's going to come up as well. Um, unfortunately, this um, there's just a huge lane to run here in this C gap. Um, for the 49ers here. So we'll play this. You can see, watch uh, Robert Quinn crash down. He's taking on the block, the pulling guard. Justin Jones crashing into that A gap. Robert Quinn taking over the B gap. And unfortunately, no one fills into that C gap. Um, so Rokon Smith, again, getting kind of behind, uh, staying in the same gap as Robert Quinn. Um, he needs to be on the other side of this Um of this tight end, at least force him back uh, to the inside where maybe one of this guy can get him or, or another linebacker can get him. Right now, there's just a huge open lane here that Roquan Smith should be filling here. Um, we'll let this go a little bit farther because I want to point out one other thing. You also have a rookie, Chopin Brisker, who I think for the most part played okay. He had a couple missed tackles though, which is a little discouraging, and this is certainly one of them. I need a little bit more better, a little bit better effort here from, from, uh, from Chacon Brisker, it looked to me like he was going for the punch out. Um, I'm all for the peanut punch. Love the peanut punch. But in this situation, when you're the last line of defense and there's no one really around you, you got to go for the wrap up. Um, and you you, you, um, you got to go for the wrap up there and just bring him down. 
don't worry so much about the ball. Good thing. Um, I believe that was Kylo Gordon who um, ended up making the play. I thought uh, Kylo Gordon played extremely well, and I'll get into that a little bit later on. Um, but Kylo Gordon comes in and makes the play. Um, so yeah, just another example of, of the one gap and, and how Roquan is maybe just overthinking things a little bit. All right, so sticking with the defensive line and the front seven, we're going to look, take a look at probably the person who impressed the most, um, one of the best players uh, on Sunday, um, regardless of what uh, how long they've been in the league, uh, Dominic Robinson, um, the rookie, fifth-round pick um, from Miami, Ohio. Uh, probably, like I said, probably the best defensive player for the Bears on Sunday. Um, when I watched... Robinson in college and the preseason. Um, he's a guy who obviously wins with athleticism. That's how he's going to win. That's, you know, his con card. He's super crazy athletic. And he was in, when he was in college and he was in the preseason, basically he would win with speed around the edge. And if he didn't win with speed around the edge, he didn't win his route, uh, win his rep. Um, he didn't have a lot of counters or if any, didn't, didn't really seem to be rushing with a plan. Um, I can certainly see why I certainly see why the Bears drafted him in the fifth round. He's a guy you take a flyer on, a guy with, you can't teach the athleticism. Maybe you can teach him a few things, um, and he can uh, take it to the next level. I certainly did not expect him to do that week one. I thought he was going to be maybe by the end of the year he could be a rotational uh, defensive lineman, give you a few sacks. I certainly did not expect it week one, <clears throat> and I don't think Mike McGlinchey expected it week one either, because he is is. Uh, approaching this like he's playing a guy who's trying to beat him around the edge. First of all, he's going to um, look how much space he's leaving in between uh, him and the guard. Um, he's going to do what's called a jump set, so instead of blocking him on the third step, he's going with the second step. So he's trying to get his hands on Robinson before he can even get around the edge, um, which is interesting because based on how he's lined up, he's lined up on the um, the strong side of the formation. Uh, because you have the the three technique here oops the three technique on the other side so you have a lot of space in between him and that defensive tackle he's also lined up with his inside foot back which means he can um he can do an inside move on his second step off of his off of his second step so he's playing this like he's playing a guy who's definitely going around the edge um but that's not what happens let's just play this You can see he ta he gets that second step, uses his hands to swat uh, McGlinchey's hands away. Um, you can see how much room there is between the left tackle or the right tackle and the right guard. A lot less room on this side. You can see that big difference there. They were not expecting him to go with that inside move. Good use of the hands. And then also just the length and the athleticism to bring Trey Lance down here. Um... That is, it's not easy to bring Trey Lance down. Say what you want about Trey Lance um, as a quarterback, but in terms of an athlete, he, he's one of the better ones at uh, quarterbacks in football. So to bring him down just by his shirt like that is very impressive. Um, if that inside move looked familiar, um, just look at the other side of the formation with Robert Quinn. He's doing the same move, but to the outside, just because it's on the other side of the formation. But you can see it there. The swap the hands away is a little bit sooner than Robert Quinn, but you can see the jump step. Um, and just the ability to, to, to do that jump step and get three yards um, is just really impressive. Um, if he can use that, just that's the only counter he really needed to develop. Um, if he can, he's got the speed, he can beat guys around the edge. If he can just show, put that on tape, that he can also beat you on the inside, that's going to then open up that speed rush again. So really impressive by uh, Dominic Robinson. Um, it's really good. I, I, I think expectations should be raised for Dominic Robinson. Most of the time, I, I say that, you know, we should temper our expectations, especially with the rookies who, who flash in week one. But like I said, that's the one thing that he was missing from his game. And that's the one thing that can take it to the next level. All, again, all he has to do is put that inside move on tape. And that's something that tackles are going to have to keep in mind now. That's something they're going to have to game plan against. They're not going to be able to just, you know, jump set him and, and get him um, and not let him get around the edge. If they do, he can go to the inside. Um, so that's really nice to see. It's not something I expect him to develop that soon. All right, another play from Dominic Robinson. This time, he's not lined up on the outside. He's actually lined up on the inside. He's over here. Lined up is almost as four technique, four eye technique. It's hard to tell if he's kind of whatever you want to call it. Is he on the inside shoulder of the tackle, or is he lined up right over there? 
of over the face of the tackle. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I love the fact that they brought in, they are bringing in their uh, three defensive ends on, on obvious passing situations. So you have Robert Quinn here, Dominic Robinson, as I mentioned, and then you, you can't see it, but that's Travis Gibson on the other side. And then you have Angelo Blackson. Um, you have one D tackle in the game. But I love the three um, defensive ends in the game. Uh, they did that throughout. It wasn't always Robinson moving inside. Sometimes Gibson moved inside. Sometimes al Muhammad moved inside. Regardless, I love the fact that they're getting their pass rushes on the field. That's a lot of athleticism for a, a, a def- uh, for an offense to, to account for. Um, and it paid off here because um, Dominic Robinson is able to beat both his guys. So he's um, kind of going up against a double team here. He's going to use the exact same move that he used against Mike Wiginshley. Again, he only needs one se- second move. This inside move, he's got the speed. Teams already have to respect that. Put this on tape, and team's going to have to respect that inside move, too. So you'll see here, again, watch Robinson. Going against the guard and the center. Inside move. <clears throat> Beats them both. Just the fact that he can jump, like, three yards to the side is just absolutely ridiculous. If this were any other quarterback in the league, or a majority of quarterbacks in the league, it's another sack for him. Um... Instead, it does force Trey Lance out of the pocket early. Just barely isn't able to get a hand on him. Um, and then Trey Lance is going to scramble for, for a few yards there. Um, but really nice tape from Dominic Robinson. Really, you know, he's not. these aren't the pressures that he's getting on design stunts um, that are just, you know, designed to get him open on a free rusher, which, you know, happens a lot, and people get excited about those sacks that come off stunts. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, that's a good, but that guy didn't really do anything. That is not the case with Dominic Robinson on these plays I'm showing. These are just him beating his man one-on-one. In this case, two-on-one and still beating him. Uh, really, really impressive stuff from Dominic Robinson. All right, so this last play on Dominic Robinson, he actually gets a sack on this play. Um, he splits the sack with, with uh, Roquan Smith, but there's things that he could have done differently here, here uh, that I think can take his help take his game to the next level. Now, he's going up against Trent Williams, one of the best left tackles in football um, against the fifth-round rookie from Miami of Ohio. Um, so he actually does get a sack here. Trey Lance kind of scrambles into this sack, if we're being honest. But I like um, one thing. This is a good example of one other move that if he can develop, he could really become a monster at the next level. So you see, kind of just does a little shimmy and then gets his body into to Trent Williams. Not really much there. Then Trey Lance kind of runs into him and he gets the sack. Oh, let's get this from this angle. What I would love to see is to for him to use his length more. He's got 35-inch arms. He's got some of the longest arms on the team. Um, longest arms probably in football from a defensive end standpoint. I would love for him to kind of set the tackle up with that move and then just use reach out with, one, with his left arm there or his right arm there um, and just kind of long arm, get his arm into the chest of, uh, of the offensive tackle. Instead, he kind of gets both on him. He allows Trent Williams to get his hands on him and his arms on him. And then once Trent Williams gets you like that, it's pretty much game over most of the time, unless the quarterback scrambles into you. And then in which case, then you might be able to pick up a sack. But if he could have just used that long arm, get have his long arm just right in the chest plate of Trent Williams or whatever tackle he's going against that any given Sunday, uh, really would take his game to the next level and really almost make him a uh, I don't want to say unstoppable. We're still talking about fifth round, but it would make him a very, very good uh, defensive end of this league. All right, so this is the first big play that the 49ers had on offense. Uh, it's basically a two-man route. Uh, we know the pe- the 49ers are a run-heavy team, and they're also a play-action-heavy team. Um, so it's basically, like I said, basically a, a two-man route. You have, use orange for the offense, you have Brandon Ayuk here who's going to run a deep cross, um, and then you have... This guy here, I don't know who that is. I think it's um, Jawan Johnson, who's going to run just kind of a go. I think, I mean, the play is, is definitely designed to hit uh, Brandon Ayuk on that deep crosser, and that's exactly what happens. I think um, this is more of a decoy. He's trying to just kind of push up field and clear out the space for to go over here. Either way, I want to give a shout-out to uh, Jalen Johnson. Um, he has lockdown coverage here. Um, even if it is a decoy, he does his job really well. Um, and, and he did that, and the reason I'm giving him a shout out here is because he did that throughout the game, um, and I just don't want, I don't have time to show all of the, the lockdown cover, coverage from Jalen Johnson. 
He did extremely well in coverage. He did extremely well in run support. He had the peanut punch for the fumble. Really strong game for Jalen Johnson. Really good sign to see him kind of buying in um, to the hits principle and to Iberflus' um, coaching and then and 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 everything. So uh, that was something early in the offseason we weren't sure if he was going to be buying in. Um, uh, he was kind of working with the twos. It, it was it was up in the air, but it does seem like he has bought in and he played extremely well on Sunday. Um, so as I mentioned, play action team. Um, they're going to run a lot of play actions. Um, Debo Samuel comes across the formation, a little fake jet sweep. Um, it looks to me like the Bears had a game plan to kind of limit uh, Debo Samuel's production. You have Eddie Jackson up here close to the line of scrimmage. He's pretty much just... Uh, his only assignment is just to make sure that Debo Samuel doesn't get the ball. If he does get the ball, tackle him right away. Um, so then you have, uh, since Eddie Jackson's up the line of scrimmage, you have Jaquan Brisker, who's responsible for the middle of the field. The little cover one is what they're running. Um, and instead of a, like, running like a cover one robber, where you'd have the safety kind of in the middle, the other safety kind of in the middle field, um, they just make sure that instead of that, they just have Briscoe in the field, and then Eddie Jackson, again, is just making sure Devo Samuel doesn't kill you. But again, play action. The linebackers come up, and they kind of, they don't come up too far, but they kind of just stay in this this area of the field. They needed to get more depth once they realized it wasn't a play action. Again, this is the play. This is the route that they're going for. It's man coverage against Kendall Vildor. He's playing it with outside leverage, so he's playing... Um, and he would have a pretty decent coverage, but watch what Jaquan Brisker does. He kind of picks um, uh, Kendall Vildor, doesn't allow him to stick with him. But you can see there are the linebackers. They know it, at this point they realize it's not a, it's not a run play. They need to get better depth there. They're staying just a couple yards down the field. Not sure if it would made a difference here, but if you look at Jaquan Brisker, he's coming up to I don't know what he's what he's seeing here. This seems to be pretty much a I guess he kind of fans out his route to get upfield a little bit. Um, but he kind of just has a pick for Kendall Vilder there um, and a big play for the offense. Uh, but a good good job by the 49ers to really leverage um, Debo Samuel and kind of use him as a decoy because the Bears are clearly trying to take him away by having Eddie Jackson that close to the line of scrimmage. Um, and he's obviously just covering him. And that opens up the deep crosser where no one is. There's Eddie Jackson. Again, his responsibility was Debo Samuel. Yeah, the linebackers could have had a little bit more depth. I'm not sure if they would have been in a position to get to that ball anyway. Uh, but a big game for the 49ers. Another play here that should have been a big play for the 49ers, but Trey Lance uh, missed the throw. Uh, but it's another play where Jaquan Brisker needs to be better. So we got Jaquan Brisker right here. It's going to be another play action. Um, it's going to draw Brisker up. It's going to draw both the linebackers up. All three of the linebackers up, actually. Um and we're gonna have they're gonna have this tight end, I think it's Ross Dwelly, gonna go around and then on a wheel route there. Uh Jalen Johnson here is on man coverage on this guy. Uh on the other side of the ball, we're gonna have a middle of the field safety. And then uh Kyle Gordon's gonna drop into coverage, kind of bracketing Brandon Ayuk as he goes up the field. Um he's gonna run um this guy's running a deep crosser. Jalen Johnson is going to run with him. Um, and then it's the responsibility of these linebackers. And and on this play, Jaquan Brisker is essentially a linebacker to get into their zones. But none of them do that. And it's picking on Jaquan Brisker just because he happened to be in the zone where the where the ball goes. But none of the linebackers did their job on this play. Let's see, there's the play action. Jaquan Brisker up on the field. At this point, everyone knows it's a pass. At this point... You know the the play action has already concluded. You got to get start getting some depth there, um, and Jaquan Brisker unfortunately does not get depth until he sees the the tight end running free. Luckily for the Bears, ball is overthrown, um, and um, and no harm done. But it could have been so on this play. Jaquan Brisker is essentially lined up as the weak side linebacker with weak side linebacker, middle linebacker. Strong side linebacker, so Roquan's actually playing the middle essentially here. You also have this linebacker here, but essentially they're running a 4 4 uh, 4 4 3 defense. But you'll see how, how 
four four. Those guys go go up in the play action, and then once they realize this play action, they don't get that depth that they need. Um, look again. Luckily, the ball is overthrown and no harm done. All right, another play with uh, Drupon Brisker lined up as the weak side linebacker. So they actually moved him up and played him like a linebacker a lot. Um, so there are this is a nickel formation, but essentially they have. Um, they brought in Jaquan Brisker. To, they have uh, Kyle Gordon in the slot. Jaquan Brisker playing the weak side linebacker. Roquan at the mic. And then Morrow as the strong side linebacker. So this is another run play. So that's a lot to ask of a young safety. To not only know where he's supposed to be at safety, but also playing him as a linebacker. Um, a lot to ask for him to do that. Let's label the gaps again. Again, that's mostly just for my purposes. ABC. So... You're going to have um, this defensive tackle. I think that's Pinnell in the A-gap. This defensive tackle, uh, Justin Jones, is going to shoot into the A-gap. This, uh, Travis Gibson, is going to shoot into the B-gap. And then it's um, Jaquan Briscoe's responsibility to be in that C-gap, which he actually does get to. He gets it to a little bit late. Um, and by and you'll see what I mean that uh, when I show that. Roquan's responsible for the B-gap. Dominic Robinson's in the C-gap. And then you have, um, in this situation, the strong side linebacker being the guy... Um, who's kind of roaming. So let's play this. So watch Brisker. He does what... He initially goes to the right, which is not what you want to do. He needs to be filling into that C-gap. Uh, he eventually realizes what he needs, where he needs to be, jumps into the C-gap, but by then, um, that there's no one over there in that C-gap. So he eventually does make it to the C-gap, but he makes it late. His momentum's taken him to the left, and he's not able to get back over to the right. If he would have went right to that C-gap, if he would have gone right to that C-gap, where he was supposed to be right here, and stood there, he would have had a better chance to get over once he saw the play developing. Um, so uh, another tough look for the rookie. Um, I do think he struggled at times. He had some good moments as well. He did make a tackle for loss, but overall... Kind of a rough game for Jaquan Brisker, uh, which is surprising because he did play pretty well in the preseason. I'm not worried. It's one game. Um, he's going to use these as teaching, teach tape to, to get better. Not worried at all about Jaquan Brisker. He did have some good moments as well. And I'm, I'm going to show one as well just so it doesn't seem like I'm uh, bashing a, a young player. So I'm going to show a good play. But uh, for the most part, he was caught out of position a few times. Okay, as promised, a good play from Jaquan Brisker. Um, he made a few of them. This is one of them. Um, so here he is here. He's, uh, this appears, it's hard to tell because it's run play, but it appears to be man coverage based on um, Jaquan Brisker following this tight end across the formation as he was in motion. Um, so it looks like it was man coverage. This is a run play, though. So Brisker sees that tight end blocking down. So we're telling him that, you know, he doesn't have to cover that guy anymore. This is a run play. And he just shoots that gap, able to get into the backfield, Wrap up the ball care for a tackle for loss. Really nice play by the rookie. That's something you know. That's all instincts. You're not asking him to do a lot on that play. You're just asking him to find the ball and tackle. Uh, and that's when Jaquan Brisker can excel. Um, you know, uh, clearly on the other plays, when you have him thinking too much, things can, you know, it's a brand new system, brand new team, brand new um, level of uh, of opponent, a uh, lot to deal with as a rookie. So the fact that he was able to make plays like this is a very encouraging sign. Um, really nice tackle on the backfield for a tackle of loss. Hopefully, you know, as we go, the, the laps coverage start to shrink. Plays like this start to increase. Fully expect your prompt risker to, to get better as the season went on. It's, it's unrealistic to expect rookies in their first career game to not make mistakes. Um, it's, that's completely unrealistic. Um, I'm excited about this secondary. Um, but I think, you know, I'm going to be really excited about the secondary in a few weeks once they've had time to meld and, and get used to the level of competition and get used to the to the defense, the new defense that they're in. Okay, let's move on to the other rookie. So with, uh, that's the uh, Kylo Gordon, other rookie on defense. Um, I thought Kylo Gordon played extremely well. Um, uh, probably after Robinson, I think he was the second best rookie out there um, on Sunday, for the, for the Bears at least. I'm going to start with one bad play, and then I'm going to get into some of the good plays, so bear with me. One more bad play before we get to the stuff people care about. Um, Bears are in a cover one with cornerbacks in man coverage, and then um, zone coverage from the linebacker and Jaquan Brisker, the other safety. So that's what we're looking at. 
So, because we're on cover one, Kylo Gordon knows that he is Eddie Jackson over the middle of the field, so he's matched up with this man. He's going to play with outside leverage, uh, which is good. He's he, he's baiting this guy, or baiting, or he wants this cornerback, or this, sorry, this wide receiver to go to the inside because he knows that he has help from, um, from Eddie Jackson. That's not what happens, though. What happens is we got, like, a little in route here and now, like, slot fade from this wide receiver that's, that Kylo Gordon is covering. Um, he, he, again, plays with outside leverage. And unfortunately, I think he just misses here. Just kind of a bad rep. We'll watch Kyler here. Again, outside leverage. Very good. That's very nice. That's what you want. In this defense, he kind of fakes the inside and gets Kyler Gordon moving inside um, before going to the outside. And just just a good route by that, by that guy, um, by that wide receiver. I don't know who that was. Uh, but good route by him. Something Kyler Gordon's going to have to work on. He bit a little bit hard on that inside move. And unfortunately, gave up a big reception. But that was really the only uh, play that, that Kylo, Gordon, uh, Kylo Gordon gave up. I have a couple of examples of good plays coming up next. All right, now for the good for Kylo Gordon, as promised. Um, so you have Kylo Gordon here in the slot. He's um, lined up against Debo Samuel here. Uh, with Not a lot to break down here. This is just a screen pass to Debo Samuel, so he's going to catch the screen. Um, who is obviously Kylo Gordon's man. Brandon Ayuk is going to come up to block... Kylo Gordon, but he does a good job just evading that and making the play um, to tackle Debo Samuel. Now, it's not easy to tackle Debo Samuel on the open field. Kylo Gordon was able to do that. Very impressive. Um, again, not a whole lot of thinking involved for, on this play from Kylo Gordon. Just good, in, nice, instinctual. Um, just coming up and making a play when the ball was thrown to his guy. Really nice play by Kylo Gordon here. As you'll see, there's the screen. He's breaking before the ball um, gets into the hands of of Samuel able to avoid Brandon Ayuk and then a really nice open field tackle on a really a guy who's really tough to bring down in the open field Debo Samuel. So really nice play uh by Gordon here. He was good in run support all day. I know that's technically a pass play, but essentially uh going um downhill and, and tackling, he was really good this in this game in this one. Alright, so as I mentioned, Kyle Gordon, very good in run support um in this one. This is an outside zone run or I'm the 49ers, they're going to give the ball to, I believe that's Debo Samuel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Debo Samuel. And then they're just going to run outside zone with their offensive line. We got Kylo Gordon here, who's going to make a really nice play to get into the backfield, um, set the edge on this play, and force Debo Samuel to cut the ball upfield um, and into the hands of uh, uh, another uh, player on the Bears to make the tackle. So Kylo Gordon does not make the tackle on this play, but he is the reason that this play um, was unsuccessful for for the 49ers. So let's play that w again. Watch Gordon, number six. Yep, Debo Samuel, a little outside zone. Love the way that he avoided Brandon Ayuk there. You can see fake outside, hard step inside to get around that block. For Again, the whole thing with outside zone is you don't want to them to get to the outside. He forced, if, if he gets, to, if Gordon doesn't make that play, look at how they have this blocked. Could have been a potential touchdown if, if Kylo Gordon doesn't get into the backfield and force that ball to go back towards the middle of the field. And then al Qadim Muhammad is able to clean that up. Really, really nice play by Kylo Gordon and run support. That was one of the most more impressive plays that I saw, um, especially from a rookie in this game. This is just the other angle. Again, get into the backfield. I mean, look at that. If, he, if he's able to get to the outside here, at least pick up five, six, seven, eight yards. Um, so really good play by Kyler Gordon there to force that back to inside. Another just good example of, you know, why you don't stop the stat sheet. Why? And it's another reason why tackles are an overrated stat. Kyler Gordon doesn't make the tackle here. He doesn't get any stats on this play, but he blew up this play in the backfield. Um, and the other guys are, are able to scramble to the ball. The other thing I like about this play, look at this. Everyone's eyes on... The ball got your car brisker who's being blocked, but he's around the ball. Everyone just kind of all 11 guys watching the ball. All 11 guys around the ball. Love seeing that. That's definitely uh, coaching right there. All right. One last play for Kyle Gordon before we move on to the next guy in the next couple plays. Uh, Kyle Gordon's out here. He's actually lined up as the outside corner. 
Um, so we've seen him a lot in the slot in those last couple of plays. Now he's lining up on the outside, and he's going to do another nice job of setting the edge and forcing the running back back into the middle of the field. So not quite an outside zone, but you do have the sweep to the outside. And Gordon's going to do a very good job of just running, getting downhill quickly and decisively. Guy can't block him. Again, doesn't make the play. Almost is able to make the tackle, at least trip him up. But he forces him back to the inside where Eddie Jackson's there for a nice open field tackle. Really love seeing also Eddie Jackson coming downhill and laying, laying some hits. That's not something we've seen a lot of over the last couple of years. So it's nice to see him get back to uh, back to form there. But this is just at the other angle. Just love how decisive he is. He sees that pitch and he just gets downhill in a hurry. Number three has no chance to block him. Um, little block in the back probably if you ask me. Maybe should have been a, a penalty there. Uh, but forces him back to most importantly... Forces him back to the inside, doesn't let him get to the outside, um, and lets the linebackers and safeties make a play on the ball. Really good to see something like that, uh, a young guy do something consistently. It's not that he did it once and it, oh, that was a nice play. He did it two or three times um, in one game um, in week one of his first season. So really nice to see that. Really shows just how well, how open to coaching he is and how well coached he is and how he's willing to, to buy into the system. All right, that's a nice little segue into our last guy, Eddie Jackson. Uh, made the nice open field tackle on that last play. Always good to see that, but even more so, it's good to see him making a play on the ball again. Uh, it's been two years since his last interception, or at least the last one that counted. He's had a couple of interceptions, fumble recoveries for touchdowns that have been called back due to penalties. Uh, so this was a big kind of monkey off his back moment. I feel like I feel like the floodgates are now open uh, to get him back to that his ball hawking ways. Uh, so. Bears here on a cover one robber. You have Jaquan Brisker, deep safety in the cover one. And then you have uh, Eddie Jackson as the robber covering the middle of the field. Um, I, it, it looks like they're disguising this as kind of a cover two based on how they're lined up. They Eddie Jackson is a little bit farther forward than Jaquan Brisker, but based on what they're doing, it looks like they're just going to run cover two man, which would be here and here. And I think that's what... Um, that is what uh, Trey Lance um, kind of assumes they're running and never kind of look, double checks to make sure. So what the the route combination that the um, 49ers are running, little um, switch route here. So you have this inside guy pushing up field. Again, just kind of clearing out the space. Then you have the outside guy running a little out and then slant over the middle. Um, Lance, it appears like he might have been looking. He looks at the safeties initially. So I'm not sure why he didn't notice that they transitioned from that cover two look to a cover one robber look, uh, but uh, clearly he didn't because um, uh, he um, he obviously Eddie Jackson's able to to jump that route. So let's just play it and see. This play has been retweeted a million times on Twitter. I'm sure you've seen it multiple times by now. Uh, Eddie Jackson just reading the eyes of Trey Lance again. He looks over the middle first, so Eddie Jackson's gonna s sneak towards the middle as soon as. He start looks the other way. He hasn't even started his windup yet. Um, Eddie Jackson's breaking on that ball. Look, as you can see right here at this point, hasn't started throwing the ball. Eddie J Eddie Jackson's already breaking. Just perfectly reading the eyes of the quarterback. So now we can see kind of what Trey Lance was looking at. So this is right after the ball was snapped. Again, looks in the middle field, looks right at Eddie Jackson. So I'm not sure what why he didn't see this. Looks right at Eddie Jackson. Maybe he was looking at the tight end there. Tight end's covered. Let's go back to the backside play. Oh, I have an easy completion. Not so fast. Eddie Jackson right there, make the interception. Also gets up, gets some yards here. Really great play by Eddie Jackson. So happy for him. So happy to see him making plays on the ball again. Hopefully it continues as, as the season goes on. All right, so that's it for the breakdown. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Make sure to um, like the video, subscribe. Uh, really trying to get this YouTube uh, thing off the ground. Again, we'll have a post-game show every week. I'm going to be doing this All-22 breakdown every week by myself. Post game shows with Luke O'Grady. Great follow. Great Bears fan. Follow him on Twitter at Luke O'Grady. We're also going to be recording a podcast tonight, a preview show of the week two game against the Packers. That'll be posted tomorrow. So you're getting three podcasts every week. You're getting, um, if you follow on Twitter, you're getting uh, uh, all 22 uh, clips posted every week. 
um, if you uh, follow on Twitter, if you uh, we're also tweeting out, we have two new writers. I want to give a shout out to Steve and Joe. Sorry, Steve and Joe, I don't remember your last names right now. at this point. Still early on, but I will post their uh, Twitter handles, handles in the description here. Make sure to follow them as well. Also great guys. Also great Bears fans. They're going to be posting a weekly uh, game recap and weekly preview of the next show. So we got a lot of contact coming to CFC. I'm really excited to be working with all these guys. Um, we've been kind of communicating uh, in, in a group chat. We've met, talked on Zoom. Awesome guys. Really, really excited to work with them. Make sure to give them a follow. And make sure to like, subscribe, and check out ChicagoFootballConnection.com. Till next time, bear down.